Hello, Aqua here again. Welcome to episode 15 of my Ultimate Feed the Beast Let's Play. I managed to get the world upload done yesterday. I um, had a bit of issues doing it. I, I used Media Fire at first and uh, I wasn't impressed with how it was set out. Maybe me being a bit of an idiot, but I couldn't really tell if I needed to pay or not to let people download from me. The FAQ is a bit thin. Um, I could have paid eighteen dollars, but I didn't know if that was going to actually stop the error message I was getting. And then they sent me an email saying I'd violated terms, and that they'd freeze my account. And ooh, so uh, and sent me a helpful link of how to sort it out. And then the, the link was dead and led nowhere. So I thought, screw these guys and get rid of that. So I'm using a thing called Dropbox, and that seems to be working. So the world downloads there. One thing to note: with the world download. Um, when I logged on this morning. When I went to the spawn, it was turned on, so I don't know if that's the copy I've put into the, uh, I don't know if that was a version I've uploaded, so the spawn might be turned on, so you, you might start off with some lag, which I apologise if that's the case. Um, I don't know if I came back on after I'd, uh, after I'd, set, after I'd copied the world folder. So hopefully that's not the case, but it, uh, it might be. Um, so just, just, if you get in lag when you first, if you download the, the world and you get in a, you get a bit of, getting a bit of issues it may be because the spawn has turned on anyway we've got some work to do with the spawner still it's not finished um i've had a couple of good posts uh good comments regarding it uh i'm gonna go through them we'll get down there but, uh here you see i've um i've improved the hub a little bit i made it on marble which is gas proof uh there is a gas in that lava somewhere it won't come up he won't come up above the surface, so I can't get him. Uh, I've changed the names of the books. I've mentioned this a couple of times, actually. Um, that I couldn't work out how to change the names of the books. And again, it was another texture pack issue. If you look at the writing desk. Now, because of my texture pack, some of the blocks are missing. So I was trying to put books everywhere. It turns out there's a block there where you put your books to rename them. And because... I didn't know it was there. I couldn't work out how to rename the books. But to rename your linking books, you just drop them in that box. And then you can rename them there. So <coughs> I've actually given the books decent names. I've got a bit of a throat, this, throat on me this morning. So I apologise if I keep clearing my throat. So I've, I've changed the names of the books to things that are a little bit more descriptive than, than Overworld and Nether. So we've got XP Grander, Desert, which is just the one above the XP Grander, uh, Manshaft, which is just near the house. Then the medium hill and the large hill that we've been to in the twilight forest. So I moved them into here, even though we could access them straight from the house just because they're out the way in here. So let's get to the XP ground there. Now there's a couple of issues with this. Um, one of them is the fact that when mobs drop into water they don't take as much damage. So they're not actually landing, being able, they're not actually da landing one punch off off death because of the water but um so i could have actually made the turtles up there add it a lot more compacts and add it just so the turtles attack the skeletons as soon as they spawn limit the spots where skeletons can spawn so um if i was doing it again i'd maybe would do it that way but because i'm going to upgrade this to iron golems i think i'm just going to leave it as it is for now it's functional enough that it's going to get me as much xp as i need to um sort that out i've moved the water back a little bit so these are the blocks that I've got water in. The middle one there, the two corners, and then these two. And that always that keeps sending you down. Oops, the tails are on, I don't want them to kill me. And ouch. Son of a bitch. That'd have been embarrassing. Um issue with issue with that. We've got an issue with the tails that a person called Joe sent me a nice message point out and that is if you look in the tail because our program is only dropping from slot one the tails are getting filled up with stuff and that's an issue anyway because the chest getting full with stuff now another thing we need to do is make this into a into a, um, an item tesseract which I'm going to get on with a bit later in the video so there'll be a pause before that because I've not made them yet but what we're doing at first we're going to change the program so that the empty from four slots. Now you see this this one here has been updated. 
So this one is going through all four of them slots there. Checking if there's anything in them. Because the te um, a skeleton can drop up to four things. It can drop a bone, a piece of coal, a sword and a wither skull. So you need up to four. So we're going to do that. And we're also going to sort of way of getting rid of all these swords. Because we don't want these stone swords. We want to keep the bones. We want to keep the coal. We want to keep the skulls. But we want rid of these. So I brought some things with me to do that. Uh, we're going to need a screwdriver, or a sonic screwdriver. So, this is like a little bit of a tutorial-ish on how red power tubes and stuff work as well, so... First thing we're going to need is, if we break that tube there, now this is a little bit compact and squashed in here, but... Uh, so I hope everyone can see alright. Put a filter there. Now, if you put a filter next to a chest or anything, it needs a redstone pulse. But, if you do it like this, so it's in line, I mean, just for clarity, in line, so it's in between two pieces of tube, then anything fed into the filter will just go straight through it. You can use a filter as a valve, or you can use a transposer as a valve. If you was to put um, a lever on a side of a redstone, of a, on a side of a filter or a transposer, you can actually use them as valve, so you can just do that, and that turn that off, so nothing could go through there now. But obviously the thing, we want things to go through there, and we want to restrict what goes through there, so what we want to put in the filter is one bone, one piece of coal, and one skull. One bone, one piece of coal, one skull. So now, the only things that can get to the chest are bone skulls and bits of coal. So that leaves a problem that where are all the, where are all the um, swords going to go? So we need to make a place for them. So the next thing we're going to use is I'm going to put a bit of tube here and we're going to fasten it to a relay there. Now what a relay does is anything you put in a relay will get spat out again. Relax acts as a chest, so that any time you need something that ejects into a chest, you can use a relay. So next to thermal expansion machines, for example. And if anything you put into a relay, it'll just get automatically thrown back out again. So if we point that off again, and put in a sword there, look, you just see the sword get spat straight at the top. So it's pretty useful for ejecting stuff. That's what we're going to use it for. We're going to use it to eject the swords into some fire. So I'm just going to break the floor here, make sure it's all safe. And I'll be back in a sec. Hello, and we're back again. It's uh, it's morning time in the UK, and uh, very kindly, I had some toast brought to me, so I had to pause the video to eat it. Anyway, I'm back now. What I've done, I've knocked a hole in the floor there. So you can see down, that's the area that we... Um, we use the filler to cover out. There's still quite a lot of space underneath here. I, uh, I went a bit too far, but that's pretty cool. I don't like having mobs too close. So what I'm going to do here is I've got a couple of things. Now, first I'm going to place, and I just want to place it against, is that relay there. And we're going to want the relay pointing downwards. Like so. So now anything that goes into the relay is going to go downwards. Right, and because of the way pneumatic tubes work, so the transposer is a block above the tube there. The transposer will always try and send things to the shortest route. So for anything that the filter will accept, the shortest route is the filter, so they'll always go into the filter. So that's good. This tube to go to the relay is, is one piece of tube longer, so they'll only go that way if they can't get in there. So that means we're pretty good. It means every, oop, it means everything that we want to go in the filter is going to go into it, and everything we don't want to go into the filter is going to end up in the relay. 
if you want to make sure of that and you had sim uh, you had things of the same length what you'd do is if you combine a tube with an iron ingot you get a thing called a restriction tube and then things can only go down that if they've got nowhere else to go so if we had a restriction tube there everything would try and go into the filter and then only things that were not allowed in the filter they'd have nowhere else to go on the system so then they'd go through the restriction tube so that's how you can make sure that certain things go to your recycler or your um, your overflow chest or whatever use restriction tubes so that's that then so the only other thing we need is something to actually destroy the items now you can use a void pipe but this can create quite a lot of swords pretty quick so I'm going to use it a little ghetto way of doing it and I know I'm going to put a bit of netherrack there and I'm going to set fire to the bit of netherrack so now we've got some fire down there so I'm sure it's not going to set fire to that I'm just obviously not going to set fire to that but so nothing wrong here that can burn so that's good so now if we throw some swords in there them swords are just getting thrown into that fire taking out the world that way now you can use a lava source block but I mean creating a place to hold the lava source block there so I'll just use a never rack in the fire for now not a wet fan so what we can do is we can take a few items out of there and throw them back into there should see them go down the tube we should see them we should have seen them go down the tube maybe I missed it if get a few more there we go there's a sword going on the tube get thrown into a fire not get bent so that's good enough. We're getting rid of rid of them, um, rid of that. And fortunately, I'm one block short, so I'm gonna have to grab that block back there. Come here, you. So that's that sorted. So we're in, a, in a fashion, so we can get rid of all these. Actually, and we go back down there again. Just uh, all the ones that we want rid of. Just throw straight in there. That gets rid of them for us. Thank you very much. So that's how you get rid of the stuff you don't want. And next thing we need to do is we need to update these programs. It's be the same as that one. So pretty straightforward. So I've terminated the program in that one. That one's still running. So this one terminated by pressing Control T, um, and I'm just going to edit the program. So I typed in Edit Startup. Uh, in fact, I'll come back. I won't show you that. So let me exit that. So Startup was running. I pressed Control T. It terminated, like so. And then <coughs> I've broken it. What we done here? There we go. So going to edit startup. What we need to do is we need to add a second loop in after this. So what we do is on this line here, I want to have it in one. I'm going to put four i equals one to four do well that's saying for this thing we're creating called i which is going to be a tail select cycle through one to four that's pretty much all it's saying so next line we'll do turtle dot select i 
Hi. And then our turtle drop goes in there. And then I forgot the rest of it. <laughs> so let's have a look in there. So let's say turtle drops it too far. Oh, of course, yeah. Then just uh, end. Then that resets the turtle select back to the first square. So that's all that's doing. One to four is one, two, three, four of them. So it just loops through one, two, three, four. And then we've dropped our sleep time to so half a second. So that end there gets us out of that loop. And that end gets us out of the end loop. So I'll just finish that real quick. I've actually done four years at university doing coding and I'm terrible at it. It was uh, never for me coding. I was interested in learning to make computer games. Now people say, eh, if you keep writing on forums, why don't you just make games yourself? So I went and did a degree on a computer science degree and I'm not I'm not a very good coder. I can read code pretty well, just I'm not real good at writing it. Also, I had an issue, which is just part of me being a bit weird, that uh, I wanted to do like an art degree where they taught me the the art style of making, engaging games, whereas all they actually really was teaching me was how to make a business, and I didn't want to do a business studies degree. If I wanted to do that, I'd have done a business studies degree. So that kind of uh, made me a little bit disillusioned with it all. And the third thing is, I'm exceptionally lazy, which is an elf. Anyway, so I can save that. Oops. Isn't that right? Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah. So we can get rid of that, exit, and then we can start up. So there you go, you saw that cycle through the top four. So that's cycling through them now and putting them into the spitting them back out into the transposer. So the bones and stuff should be coming to there. So we've got 31 with the skulls in there now. Let's just make sure that um let's take some of them, make sure they're going in there, okay. That should go up to 39, there you go. And then let's change this one. I'll change this one off camera so you, you get the gist of it. So that's how you set the Oh, you set them up. Let's start that up again. Uh, yeah, it's still a little slow. So when I get the iron golems. It'll die a lot quicker. Uh, one other thing I need to do from the house. I've got a chest with books in, blank books and the. Uh, oops. Oh dear. off before it all goes wrong. Alright, I've not turned the left turtle on, which is a mistake. I left a way for the skeletons to escape, which is also a mistake.
So that's that side running. So them two are running now. And um, that guy is running. He's just only running on one square. Yeah. I'll deal with that in a bit. Uh, one other thing while I'm here. I'm going to show you at the top. And then that's that pretty sorted until I get the item Tesseracts made. So once I've shown you this, I'm going to cut. And then I'll be back when they're made. We'll set them up. So all I did here to stop the extra spawns on the top was I made some sandstone half blocks and just gave this pyramid an extra layer in half blocks all the way around it. So it keeps it looking like a pyramid. I want it to look right still. And then um, wolves can't spawn on half blocks. So they can't spawn up here now. I believe that's far enough away so they can't spawn on there anyway. So so we sorted that out. So I'm going to go make some item tesseracts and I'll see you in a bit. Hello, back again. Now I've made a couple of item tesseracts which um, I don't think I need to cover so I think we all know to make them now, using the liquid ender in the magma crucible and a uh, liquid transposer and stuff. So I made a couple of item tesseracts and I'll just do a little test here to make sure I'm putting things into the ME network correctly. So what I did was I took out 64 bones, so I've got 826 bones left. If I throw them in that relay, they disappear into the item tesseract, which I'll just call ME in. Uh, set to send only and this one's set to receive only that thing there is called an ME interface which you can do some extra stuff with but at the minute we don't need to we can just have that as long as that feeds into that that'll put things into the interf into the network so now we see our 826 has gone back up to 890 because then bone just went straight back into the system. That's pretty cool. So that's how you get stuff into your ME network. Um, well, I'm on that. Before, when I showed you what was on each of these discs, and I've got like ingots on one and uh, blocks on another and stuff like that. But because these discs are not restricted to what can go into them, when anything goes into the system, it'll just put them into the first available disc at the minute. You can restrict your disc so that certain discs can only have certain things which is how I will be doing it at some point I'll have one disc that only accepts various ingots so then I can take out the ingot disc as I'll probably call it and then that just contain ingots but as you can see as I've been taking things in and out this has got bones in it it's got some soul sand in it so I'll just fill up as it needs to because there's not no restriction there but in the final case when these are all the 64k ones so I guess that's yeah, the ultimate goal is to have this stacker full of 64k storage units. And each one of those 64k's will be restricted to certain items so that you can uh, keep a bit of a control on what items are where in the, in the discs. But yeah, at the minute they're all just getting banged on each one there. And as they get full, I'll just make more. And then, as I said before, when they're all full, they'll start upgrading to the next level and so on. And then at some point, yeah, at some point I'll be restricting what goes in each. So I just wanted to cover that while I was while I was near it. So this is good now. So what we can do is get rid of that because we don't need it. Uh, sling that. Why can I sling that? Put that down there for now. Really, is always coming handy. And want to break that guy. And want to head back to the XP grinder. Actually. I'm going to need a bit of sandstone, which I think I've run out of. Uh, yeah, so, oops. So I shift left click there instead of shift right clicking. Like a douche. Let's take a little bit of a. Uh, take a little bit of sandstone with me because I'm going to move the test racks under the floor. So I'm going to need someone to cover up the hole I'm going to make. I think I just need one, but I've got an extra one just in case. Uh, since I've been gone, I've, uh, I've changed the program in that one as well. Let's take all that junk out of there. We can break that wooden chest. And break that pipe. 
Yeah. Well, before I just, just really make this clear, when I said in line, I said it's between bits of paper. I, 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 I mean, yeah, I saw the pipe going into it. I'm making a mess of this today, to be honest. But hopefully, you guys will forgive me and not all unsub. Um, so, Emmy in. Set the frequency. See, I always disable that. Just force a habit now. And then, I want that one to send. So there we go. So now, any items. Got these guys. Tick. Just fit out. Should come through them guys. Into there. So if we go check, we had 890 bones. I'm just going to throw some more bones in there. Now this is going to fill up the ME network pretty quick once this is running in it. So we are going to have to start expanding the ME network. And cover all that up. And let's go check. See what? Uh, see how many bones we've got. So you see it's got 1250, so that's working, they're going in. So we've got to keep an eye on how many bones we get. It's like, um, you only want so many bones, it's useful for bone mill and stuff, but you, you get a massive, you get a massive amount of bones from this. So you don't actually want to get rid, get rid of some of them. Um, so I've not looked into yet is if the ME networks can rest restrict how many pieces of, how many pieces of a particular item they hold. I'd like them to like hold up to X amount and then spit out any more, but we'll see how that works. So let's throw some stuff in there. Go back and check one more time. So that should be added to the interface. And it hasn't been. Interesting. So is that because the coal's gone in? Is that because it wasn't already in there, perhaps? Oh. Oh no. Because I'm an idiot and because of the filter. Whatever I just threw in there has been destroyed. Is it a bit of sandstone and a bit of wood? Because the filter only accepts a certain thing, so they've gone into the fire. Yeah, I'm not I'm not on fire today. Um As you can see, I had an assembly table and one laser at the minute. And that's from before when I said about the expense of making circuits compared to the cheapness of making the redstone golden chipset. So I made a couple of them just to show that I'm real low on stuff. So I can't really make any more but one redstone, one bit of gold will get you one redstone golden chipset which in a lot of cases can be used in the place of a circuit. So you save on rubber, copper, um, iron all that stuff, so that's good. And then the, the next step up from that is the the pulsating chipsets, which are the ones used for our target gates, the use ender pearls. They can be used in a lot of cases in place of the advanced circuits. So if you've got a good ender pearl supply, which we've got a pretty good one from the minium stone, and we will have a better one once we get a ender farm, then the pulsating chipsets are pretty cheap as well. So they make it they're make, making circuits a lot cheaper in the long run, so that's pretty cool. Um, right, what else are we going to do in this episode? I think that's probably going to be it. Uh, so I'll check a couple more things before I go. I'm going to sleep real quick, make sure no baddies get me. Um, I don't know what that's about. I pressed my Z button. Or is it my Z button? No, the button next to your Z, your uh, slash, and I think that's probably for the one, maybe the one-way glass in the um, secret doors mod that I showed yesterday. The next, ah, oh, right, yeah, I'll show that before I go. The next step for me, as I mentioned yesterday, is I need to start sorting bees out. I'm getting a lot of a lot of bee products I need to deal with now. 
I've got real jelly and pollen, so I can actually start making alvary blocks, although I can't make many yet. Um, start working towards that breeding alvary, and I can start breeding the better breeds that I actually want to use. Um, I've turned my farm off for now. I've turned Dave off. Uh, that's sort of a quick say, it's the easiest way of turning them off, is when you make this detector block, advan I think it's called advanced detector rail, you actually, it makes it as a, as a pair, so you get, you get two, so you get a spare one. I put the spare one under the track there, and I put a lever next to it. So what that does, that just turns them off. So next time he comes round, because I've turned that off again, um, he should come round and he should stay there. There we go. So that's how you stop your Steve's cat farm from running if you want it to stop running. The reason why I want it to stop running is because it's all a little bit full. So until I start using more resources, that's that's alright to be turned off for now. Um, I've turned the farms off for now because I've got enough stuff to keep me going until I get ramped up. Now this will all kick back in once I start creating stuff at a bigger scale once I've got quarries going and stuff. So I think the only thing I've got left on this episode is I've updated the board. Anyone who's downloaded the world will have seen this because this is in the uh, updated world. So things that I'm going to be doing, I'm going for me, is Bees and Towncraft. This will the ongoing off camera stuff. Um, I start going to the Thalmic Bees as well. Because the Thalmic Bees are pretty cool. If you can get up to the pure bee, node purifying bee, then that creates aspects you can use for your research and stuff. And because that's just a flower type, you can actually put it onto all your bees. So you can get quite a lot of aspects just passively from your bees while they're creating other stuff as well. That's pretty cool. Um, so, time it bees, iron golems, obviously I want to upgrade the the uh, XP farm to use iron golems. The problem with the iron golems is, the iron golems on their own are good to kill stuff, but you need the, you need the visors, so they actually drop XP, and that's relying on um, knowledge fragments that you get from chests. And I've got a few, somewhere. I've got 12. Uh, so should be able to get that research done because you need to start research with one I believe so to research stuff like bow ties and all stuff like that and the visors you actually put a knowledge fragment in here to start with instead of just putting items in here you actually have to start with a knowledge fragment there so the fact I've got 12 I think I've got enough to do everything so that should be alright actually so that's the kind of things I'm going to be on with offline and uh, then the things we need to get on with to actually progress um, our setup here. Next thing we need to look at is titanium. We need titanium because if you want a quarry that requires titanium. So that's our ste stepping block. So we need to make an industrial electrolyzer and a blast furnace. And I'm probably going to make an industrial grinder as well. You get titanium from bauxite. Um, I've got a bit of bauxite but I've not done anything with it yet. If you look up box like it goes into, you can pull it into dust, matter it into dust, you grind it into dust you actually get an aluminium, you get a guaranteed aluminium dust as well. Um, I'll probably just pulverise it because you end up with a load of aluminium, more than you can use. Uh, it's pretty useful for to use in certain things, you can use it in place of iron in a lot of places or refined iron. Um, but you don't have to wait for it, so you get a ten percent chance there. I'll just probably pulverize the bauxite at first. Bauxite dust, that's what goes into your electrolyzer. Now you see in the electrolyzer it gets twelve bauxite dust. So that's three bauxite ore which will get you two tiny piles of titanium so you need six or per pile of titanium and then them guys obviously so you need two of them to turn into a titanium dust and then that guy you actually need to cook in a industrial blast furnace 
because it's got a higher heat capacity than what your real craft blast furnace can do. So you need an industrial blast furnace to make that into an ingot. We need two of them to make our first quarry. And the reason for that is, if you look at a quarry, most of it's pretty straightforward. You see there's, you've got the um, you've got the options on the chip there that I was mentioning. The uh, the cheapest one I've found is the pulsating chip set, that one, which is just a redstone and an enderpearl. That gets you two of them. So it's half a redstone, half an enderpearl. So that, that, for advanced sake, it's the cheapest for me. Um, the reason why we need the titanium is for this guy. It's advanced. Is it advanced? No, just a diamond drill. A diamond drill takes a couple of ingots down there. So that's the stumbling block, them guys. So that's what we need to be doing. That's what I'll be setting up next episode, starting to put them together. So I hope this was uh, fun to watch. Made a few mistakes in this episode. Uh, did a bit of boring coding, which I don't want to get into doing on, on camera a lot. Um, the people out there, like I said last episode, like Die Wolf and Gould from the Minecraft server, who um, are really good at the turtle stuff, far better than I ever will be. So I'm going to leave. I'm going to make my systems as turtle free, as, as code free as possible. Um, oh, thank you for watching. Um, have I mentioned I'm over 200 subs? Thank you very much. I went to bed last night just after I got 200 subs. That's the, the time I've been, I've had this, the uh, series going. I did, never thought I'd be up to 200 subs already. That's awesome. Um, hopefully it can keep going up. I actually logged it on to, I woke up to 220 subs, so I've got another 20 hours of sleep. Um, thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. Um, any likes and stuff is also very much appreciated. And feel free to tell your friends and spam my name on other people's channels. Nah, I'm only joking. Um, so thanks very much for that. Uh, I'm really enjoying doing this. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm not getting a lot of time to play on my main server with my mates, but uh, once we get things set up here a bit better, I should get time for that as well. So And start doing videos on there again. My, I've got some videos from there that don't get as many views as the as uh, this Let's Play does. But. There's going to be some interesting build stuff I'm going to do on there. Some more advanced, um, some more advanced build stuff, like uh, a lot of the B stuff I've done on there is what I'm going to be doing on this server. But I'm not going to show it on this because I've already put videos up, that kind of thing. So I think I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope I see you next time. Cheers. Bye.